And then let me go back to the notes. So there is an exercise 7.12, uh, which is uh, asking you to write the infinite dimensional rep uh, matrix representing D4 power series. And then there is an exercise 7.13 in which you are supposed to compute the matrix in associated with integration of polynomials. So how do you proceed? Well, in the case of integration as a kind of inverse of derivation, well, you start to do exactly what we have done now. But of course, now we start with the diagram that goes in the inverse direction. So when you are integrating a polynomial of degree n, you get a polynomial of degree n plus one, and the arrows now go from the bottom to the top. And the operation on the right hand side is integration. It is not anymore the differentiation. Otherwise, everything is the same. Um, infinite dimensional matrix D for power series. This is very interesting. Uh, it is, I think, almost done, or in fact, even done here. Uh, and it is very simple in a certain sense. So we represent power series like just uh, vectors uh, of real numbers defined on integers. So the idea is that uh, uh, these are just the coefficient no, of, of x to the power zero, x to the power one, x to the power two, and so on and so forth. And so instead of having g2, g3, we have just integer, but let's say as an approximation or a representation of natural numbers. And so what is the derivative? What is, what is f? What is f following e? for the case in which f represents the derivative of the representation? Well, it is a function that goes from integers to vectors uh, representing power series, so vector real integer. OK, so for the first integer, which is 0, the first natural number 0, well, the derivative of uh, uh, of 1 times uh, x to the power 0, so the derivative of 1, is zero. And the derivative of x to, to the power n uh, is just, uh, you know, n times x to the power uh, n minus one. So we are here s, which is just n from integer times the n minus one canonical basis vector. And we are done. We have built an infinite dimensional matrix by just applying this combinator, transpose their PS. And uh, for instance, of course we cannot, so this is an infinite matrix, so we cannot represent it, we cannot print it out, but we can take, for instance, the first 10 uh, columns of this matrix. And uh, no, we, we, can, we can take, no, no, sorry, that was a mistake. We can take the first 10 elements of the third column, of the third column. The third column is supposed to represent uh, uh, the derivative of x to the power three, that should be three times x to the power two. So this is x to the power zero, x to the power one, yes, x to the power two, two so three times x to the power Two. So that's 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 what 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 is expected. Uh, right. So this exercise seven point twelve uh, was not very difficult actually. Let's move on a little bit uh, to um, we skip we skip this part. Uh, so sorry, I'm talking without showing you what I'm talking about. So we are skipping this extra part on the inner product for function and Fourier series, but I just wanted to point out that at the end of this, there is an exercise 7.7, .7, which is actually very, very nice and does not require reading the whole part in order to be solved. Uh, you are asked to, um, 
to implement or to derive the function derived for the representation of uh, uh, this uh, um, this uh, um, uh, Fourier series, and uh, this is something that I have done for you. Uh, I think I have done it. Let me check. Yes, I have done it here. Uh, no, I haven't done it here. Yes, yes. It is done here. It is actually quite nice. Uh, so uh, I would invite you to have a look at it. Um, well, in fact, I invite you to have a look at it. But we do not have time to di discuss it now. Very nice exercise, however, worth doing also as a preparation. So this, this kind of transformation come quite often in exams, uh, I think. So deterministic system. So the last uh, 15, 20 minutes uh, uh, of this lecture are to be about, uh, about dynamical systems. Uh, and we are going to go very fast through the deterministic dynamical system, through non-deterministic dynamical system and stochastic dynamical system, if we manage to do so. And I would like to reserve like five minutes for a wrap up. So what are, what are dynamical systems? Well, they are like simply said, they are graphs. Uh, which are defined on a finite set of nodes, at least in this approximation. We are looking at finite uh, dynamical system now. And they can be described by a function that which is often called next, which uh, uh, simply represent this transition from a state to the next state. So for instance, here there is an illustration of a graph with some nodes uh, 0, 1, uh, 2, 6. And the idea is that they represent uh, the dynamics of a system that if in state 0, will be in state 1 at the next step. And if in state 4, will be in state 6 at the next step, and so on and so forth. So there are many, many applications of this idea of dynamical spaces. Uh, for instance, in climate science, we have this notion of safe operational spaces. And uh, in many cases, in climate science, we have huge dynamical system. And then the idea is that one would like to steer the system, for instance, to reduce emission or to control emission or to take measures for the system to stay in uh, some subset, which is meant to be safe. For instance, not to exceed a 1.5 or, or two degree uh, threshold. So uh, dynamical system are, are very much used uh, in many, many applications in different kinds of sciences in engineering. And the basic idea also in this notion of safe operational spaces is always of uh, how, so wait a moment, there is something in the chat perhaps. Uh, no, it's fine. So the main idea is, we have this dynamical system, we have this transition function, and we would like to describe how subsets of that system evolve. So if I start in a subset, what happens? Am I able perhaps to stay within this subset if this is a kind of safe subset or am I forced to go out of this subset? So the idea here is to see how a system, so how such a transformation next X on so-called characteristic function. And characteristic function are just description of subsets. So the characteristic function of a subset A of a set G is just a function from G to bool, which is defined in such a way that CG is true if and only if G is an element of A. So characteristic functions are in a certain sense, as you see, they are function from G to bool, from an index set to bool. Bool perhaps is not a field, 
but still this is a little bit similar to what we have done so far. So the question is, can we represent this characteristic function in terms of vectors? So this is the idea which is uh, uh, followed here. And uh, um, we can see, for instance, that if we think for a, for a moment, for a moment, we forget for a moment this Boolean function. We, we think, for instance, that um, we are representing this as vectors of real numbers. So what could be, for instance, uh, a linear transformation F that maps a vector of type RG onto itself, representing this action of next? Well, uh, we do not have so many possibilities. We do not have so many possibilities. For instance, if we start in zero and we go in one, well, we would, we would like to have that F of E zero is just E one. And so we define F, we define F to be just uh, the composition of E following next. So the composition of F, sorry, F following E. So our, you see the, in this equation, in this equation, what we are doing, we are just saying that F following E is equal E following next. So that's the only way we can use next or the only meaningful way to use what we have in our hands, which is this transition function next, in order to build F following E. And we know that if we have a definition of F following E for our canonical base vectors, which are in this case six, not seven, then we have our transition matrix. So, and that's it more or less. There is nothing more than uh, this. So we take, we take S equal to R and we define F following E to be equal to E following next. And uh, then we construct the associated transition matrix and we can iterate the system. And this is something that I wanted to show you here. So for a simple deterministic system, we have this function next one. And so we have this M1 is just the transpose of E following next one. And uh, so we can have a look at our M1. No, we cannot. So M1, so there is something that doesn't work here. What, uh, what is going on? Okay, M1. So void function on Haskell Hux. So what is the type of next one? Uh, okay, this is something misspelled. This is meant to be next one, okay. So what is the type of M1? What is the type, the type of M1? So what is uh, M1? Ah, I cannot show M1. I can show the columns of M1. That's okay. Uh, because M1 is in fact a function. So this, this, the columns of M1 built in this way should be indeed, should indeed correspond to the columns of this matrix that you have in the text. So you see building building these matrices, so you have to check it out. It is indeed very simple. So for instance, what we can do, sorry, again, what we can do is to, now that we have uh, our M1, we can compute the matrix vector multiplication uh, of um, starting from three and four. 
then we end up in six. And then, you know, we can go back here and look at our diagram and uh, see what happens if we start in three and four. Yes, we are going back to six. So this is, this is, this is the idea. So we can very easily, we can very easily use this abstraction that we have constructed in order to build the matrix which is corresponding to this dynamical system. And uh, I have implemented here a simple function that computes that you can use in order to make some experiments. For instance, uh, you can uh, you can compute, for instance, after zero step of iterating M1 uh, where you get, and you can compute the whole trajectory. For instance, after three steps, or perhaps you take the last, uh, the last state, the last vector that you obtain after having iterated seven steps, and you see that you end up always in this final state six. So this is the idea. Um, Notice that this function here, that we do not have so much time to discuss, but it is very simple. We are just iterated. We are just iterating this matrix vector multiplication, starting from a vector V. Uh, and then we are taking the first uh, N plus one uh, iterates. Um, so this function is very generic. And it is going to be useful to iterate um, many kind of matrices and many kind of dynamical systems. So back to the lecture and the move to non-deterministic system. So non-deterministic system are a little bit like the deterministic system, but the difference is that if you are, for instance, in zero, then you might go to either one or two. And for instance, if you are uh, in three, then you can only go to six. But for instance, uh, if you are in two, then you can go to either four or five. So it's, it's a situation in which even though you might know where you are, you do not know exactly where you will be next, but you have some information. For instance, if you are in two, you know that you will be only you can only be in either four or five and not in six, for instance. So the question is, how do we describe in this case, this transition function next? And uh, well, one possibility is that of describing next as a function that starts from our index set G and returns a characteristic function on that set G, something that tells us what are the state in which you can be in after having made one transition. And here we have one implementation of such functions. And uh, in spite of the fact that uh, uh, B is not really a field, but just a ring. And if you remember, we had some of these combinators defined for rings, not for fields. And this is the reason why we had this. I think it was in the canonical base vectors. In spite of this fact, we can, uh, we can still apply this idea uh, and we can build our matrix. So our matrix is going to be the transpose of F following the uh, canonical basis vectors. So what is in this case, what is in this case F following E? What we have in our hands is just this transition function next. We do not have anything else. So we have to ask ourselves whether we can define F following E and therefore the transition matrix in terms of next. And one possibility is, you know, just to take uh, so first of all, we have to be aware of what is the type of this function. This is a function that has to go from G into something. 
that has to be a vector. And this has to be a vector of GB, of course. And so the question is, how can we define this function by having in our ends only the transition, the transition function? We do not have so many possibility, and I suggest that we define it at V following next. So let's have a look at V following next. And let's have a look at whether this is a useful definition. So we are in the non-deterministic system. We have defined this function next to, which in the text is called F2. I've called it next, not to make too much confusion with F and next. And we define the matrix M2 to be the transpose of V following next two. So let's have a look again, sorry, at the columns of M2. So that should be, so these columns, okay, that's perhaps not, not very nice. Uh, this should be the columns of the matrix that you have in the text with true instead of one and false instead of zero. But uh, let's take, for instance, now the matrix vector multiplication of this M2 starting with, uh, with the from starting from the nodes two and three. So we get something like, uh, well, let me put to it once again. We're getting false, 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 true and true. So this is something that you have to check. Um, so we can iterate, we can iterate this system in much the same way as we could iterate the other system. And we can compute, for instance, uh, uh, the states, sorry, sorry, I'm trying to copy and paste this stuff. We can compute the state, the states that we can reach with M2 in two iterations. We can take the last of this. And this is something that you are asked to use in an exercise. So the next application are stochastic system. So let me go back to stochastic system. So stochastic system are Again, something very similar to non-deterministic system, but this time you have probabilities which are associated to the transition. And this probability have to sum up to one. And uh, so the question is, what is going to be next three in this case? Well, it is going to be something that maps the index set G into probabilities, which is something between zero and one and that we, as usually, we model with real numbers. And again, you get exactly the same situation and exactly the same uh, implementation as we had before, stochastic system, next three, now defined as a function from G to G real, and the associated matrix as being the transpose of V following next three. So we are done, uh, but I would like to um, I would like I would like to invite you to have a look a little bit more in detail into this code. Uh, there is, by the way, here also an explanation of uh, why of you could also use here um, list-based representation of vectors, as we were discussing in the beginning of this section of this lecture, and you will see what are the uh, disadvantages of using this representation. This is something that I have implemented here for you, an X3L implemented in terms of list and uh, the associated uh, small functions for iterating this stuff that turns out to be much more difficult if the implementation is done in terms of list as if it is done in terms of function. Uh, I'd like to use one more minute to conclude uh, this lecture, quantum system is something that we do not look at with uh, 
just a very short wrap up. So the wrap up is the following. We have applied linear algebra notion to model dynamical systems. So we have seen that deterministic system can be modeled with transition function of this kind, non-deterministic system with transition function of this kind, and stochastic system with, with transition function of this kind. In general, if we abstract a little bit away from these different types, we can say that dynamical system have been modeled with transition function of type X in some kind of functor of X, some kind of possible Xs. And uh, what we have done is just to first define this function next, then to compute F following E as equal always to V following next, and then we have iterated this function. Nothing more. This has been what have we been doing in the last 15 minutes. And uh, the types of the operations which are involved in this computation are surprisingly similar to the types of the monadic operations that some of you might know from functional programming. And this raises the final question of whether vector S is a monad. And if you look into the um, Haskell file, file, you will find an answer to this question, which is positive with, an, uh, um, with a computation that uh, shows that vector S is in fact uh, an instance, is a functor and in particular is a monad. So this is uh, this final wrap up. I use it is is a kind of extra part of uh, um, of the lecture, and I've used this extra part in the last two minutes just to wrap up what we have done and try to put together some conclusion. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. As I said, I will be available next week on Tuesday afternoon for questions and answer, and. Uh, uh, do not forget uh, to go into the exercise sec uh, session uh, tomorrow afternoon and otherwise have a nice weekend in spite of all what is going on in the world uh, in these times. Bye bye. Ciao.